Hey, I'm Ben, I'm one half of 2BM Studios, and this is another devlog for our game Wizard Chess, a tactical chess roguelike currently in early access. So this devlog is going to be a little bit different to some of the last ones that I've done because I don't have anything super specific to go over. Just kidding. It's me, again, from the future this time. Uh, I ended up re-recording this whole video because I actually made a lot of the changes I was going to talk about here, and so we do have something specific to talk about. So let's talk about it. Making a game, at least for us, is a series of experiments where we try and take a small step into the adjacent possible and see if the game is fun with that change. We don't have the resources to do huge technological spikes or massive prototypes. We have to be very tactical about testing out what will and won't work on the game. And that's kind of how we got to where we are today, is we build these features out just so there are enough scaffolding to check if the structure is stable, if we can build more on top of it, where this will lead. And at some point, which seems to be now, we have to think about how to take that scaffolding back down and actually decide how it will really be in the finished product. And when I look at the path to release, we could actually probably kick this thing out as quickly as possible and make an okay game and just sell it and like... I just don't really see the point. Right now, Wizard Chess feels like a good game, but it doesn't always feel like a great game. And this is familiar to me because we have released commercial games before. I've finished quite a few games in the past and there's always this transition where the major problems get sort of resolved and then you, the minor problems all come into the foreground as being like, oh, this tiny thing is actually the least fun part of the game and we need to do something about it. Some of these are simple things, like, like known bugs, UI glitches, dialogue that's out of place, misleading entries in the codex or something, but there is one big change we've been thinking about for a long time, and it's going to upend pretty much the balance of the entire game, but we did it. So um, first, a recap of how things used to work. In Wizard Chess, you control a constantly changing army of units, where each unit is of a certain archetypal class, like Merc or Dog or Archer, and they also have three different base stats, Attack, Defense, and Skill. Those are all used for your basic moving around the arena, combat calculations, etc. Units also have an elemental alignment, so maybe fire or air, for example, and over the course of a run, you will upgrade the stats of your unit, and you will sometimes switch their element. You can change their unit class, but there's one other way units change, which is traits. Traits are passive effects that are equipped to units, and they add usually automatic behavior, but sometimes they augment the base behavior of a unit as well. These will be things like, if you deploy this unit with this trait, in a room full of uh, units of the same type, then maybe it will gain extra attack based on every unit of the same type as it that's deployed. And so they create synergy across your party. This has served us pretty well for several years, this version of the system, but it has become clear that this system is lacking some sort of cohesion. It's not quite coming together. The problem is actually fairly straightforward. Elements and traits do not interact as deeply as they should for the system to be as interesting as possible. And ultimately, having high base stats, like a lot of attack or defense, just ends up being more relevant than the traits or the elements that a unit has by the end of the run, especially on a high level game. So the question we were working with is, how do you make two systems interact more deeply? Well, without going too deep into game design, you can make them the same system. So we're introducing something we're calling elemental traits you'll be able to imbue a unit with an element by purchasing an upgrade or earning one through regular kind of combat encounters, and repeatedly imbuing a unit with the same element will increase their devotion to that element up to level six. So a unit can have not just an element, but some amount of level in that element, which we're calling their devotion to the element. Rather than being sort of random in their effects like the old traits were, each element is associated with a particular kind of playstyle. So fire is coupled to aggression, water is coupled to defense, air to movement, earth to staying still, wood to devotion, and metal to diversity. And this does mean we had to implement 36 new traits into the game for this feature, and all I can say is that I'm glad that that is done. These progressions for each element uh, to go from mild but useful to sort of insane and maybe hard to use at the highest level, so that if you invest in a unit and imbue it six times with the same element, you're going to get a pretty crazy effect. So with fire, for example, the first level of imbuing fire with one devotion will get you, when you defeat an enemy, gain one attack until the end of the encounter. This is good, like it just is a very good ability for a unit to have, but at six devotion, 
Every time you attack, the unit will permanently gain one attack and temporarily lose one defense. So this unit can become insanely powerful, but it's going to die fairly easily if you don't manage it. And I think that that's more interesting than a strictly beneficial upgrade is one that makes you play a certain way. The highest level of all of the elements is pushing you towards some kind of like exaggerated version of one of those play styles. So it was a lot of work <laughs> on design and on implementation, but I'm glad that we did it because it massively increases the importance of both the elements and the traits right now. And interestingly, it also decreases the cognitive overhead of playing quite a lot because instead of going to a shop and picking between three traits and thinking, do I want to give this to one of my units? It's just element imbue upgrades. And you don't have to ask the question, do I want this trait on this unit? You need to ask, do I have a unit whose devotion I want to increase towards their element? It's a much simpler question. And I think it's also more fun because you get to say, do I want an aggression build or do I want like a defense build, right? It lets you, the player, have that instant legibility of, I see a unit with a given set of stats and a given element, I know how I should use it. So I'm planning to release these changes as part of the next patch, which will coincide with this video going out. So these changes are available now on Steam, but uh, <laughs> do be warned, the balance may be all over the place right now. And as always, I really appreciate our players' patience as we introduce chaos into the game. Please do report any jank or bugs to us on Discord and we'll try and fix it as soon as possible. It is very difficult to change the core mechanics of a game without breaking a bunch of stuff at the same time, but we're doing our best. On a personal level, I'm relieved to finally be shipping this update. Uh, it's taken longer than I wanted to, but it is finally here. So I think the plan from here looks pretty simple. We need to work out what to do with the quests and the perk system after changing the balance like this. We need to finish the final boss and the end of the game. And then we need to polish and balance and just get it ready for release. Uh, that's kind of weird to be able to say, but getting real close to the end of this thing. It is getting very hot in this room, so I'm going to try and wrap up the video. I just wanted to take a moment here at the end to say thank you to all of our players, but especially those of you who are active in Discord. We read and appreciate every comment and piece of feedback that everyone leaves. and. It is really motivating to hear from anyone who's had a good time with the game. So if you have played Wizard Chess and have enjoyed it, please consider leaving us a Steam review. It's the only way that Steam knows what kinds of players might uh, enjoy our game, so it really helps us out. And if you would like to keep up with the development of the game more generally, you can like and subscribe here on YouTube. You can head over to our Discord to see incremental updates and ask questions, suggest ideas, or you can wishlist or purchase the game on Steam now and check it out for yourself. I think that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thank you for watching until the end, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.